Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another class. Tonight we're going to be doing a little bit of painting and a little bit of colored pencil. So if you're interested in doing that tonight, stick around and we'll get to painting here in a moment. If you're new here, my name is Paige and I am the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at Gumption. And tonight we are actually going to be painting and drawing a seahorse. That's right. So if you saw the intro for this class, you saw that little uh, seahorse. That is what we're going to be doing tonight. And uh, if you would like to uh, draw your own seahorse, you can certainly do that. Uh, but I have a link that is in chat that you can download so you can trace your very own seahorse. Um, I have mine ready to go. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to uh, do that. Hi, Colin. It's nice to see you here with me. Uh, if you're painting along, let me know. If you're just hanging out, that's rad too. Okay, so let's see. This class will last about an hour and you can get as detailed or not as you want. And if you don't have colored pencils or you don't have watercolor, you can still participate in this class. I'm just gonna show you how I worked with this project and you can follow along. If you have questions at any time, you can throw them in chat for me and I am happy to answer those. I answer them periodically through our class schedule or our class here this evening. And again, I'm using Prisma colored pencils and watercolor tonight. All right. So uh, one tip that I'm going to give you, if you've been tuning in for the last couple of weeks, I've discussed this last week, we explored this. Uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of heat uh, with my colored pencils. And um, not everybody has one of these boards. I certainly don't expect you to go out and buy one, but you can use a cookie sheet and a heating pad and get the same effect. You just turn the cookie sheet upside down over the heating pad and it will warm that cookie sheet up and then you can get to heating up your pencil. So that's a little trick for you. All right, so let's get going. Um, if you're in chat with me, just let me know that you're here and if you need a little extra time, uh, to sketch out your seahorse. I can certainly allow that for those folks who are here live with me. I'm going to switch my camera up here really quick and we'll get to painting. Maybe. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see uh, the seahorse that I did earlier today and then we have my sketch here of that said uh, seahorse. Now you can use any kind of color combination that you want to. So if you're not into pink and uh, pink and orange and you can do yellow and blue or green and blue, whatever you choose. And I have, so I'm going to zoom out here, I have my paint here kind of mixed from this morning, but I'm going to mix up a little bit more. So I'm using this Opera Pink, which is a favorite of mine. Let's see here. I just splattered all over here. It's okay, that'll add a little interest probably. So I'm just going to mix up my paint here and you're probably still sketching along with me. So I hope that your week has been a good one and uh, you're not cooking where you're at too much. You know, it's been warm here. Tis summer. Definitely summer. But I'm lucky because I have some plants out back and my plants are still alive. So too many of these hot days, they might struggle, but I haven't killed them yet this summer, which is rad. Okay. 
So how I approached this, the one thing that I really love about these two paint colors that I have here, this is a Daniel Smith Opera Pink, and then I have this uh, Transparent Pyro Orange by Core, is that they do this beautiful granulation. So I'm going to zoom in here really quick, and we'll kind of see if you can see what granulation is. It separates here, and it creates texture which is so cool. And I really tried to kind of keep the texture in this guy and then just add in my colored pencil where I felt like I needed a little bit of uh, definition or sh shading there. So I am going to do a wet and wet technique where I lay down some water and I'm just gonna cover everything here with this water. It's really dry where I live, and uh, oftentimes this dries before I even get a chance to get paint in there. So I'm going to try to move fast and get plenty of water down. I'm using a pretty good sized brush for this, too. This is a Oh, this is a silver black velvet brush that has a nice tip. I also use Trakel brushes, so you'll see some pink brushes and a flat brush here that I like to use, and those are Trakel brushes for those of you who are supply lovers. And then I just start dabbing in my color here and just letting it spread. And that's one thing I really love about core watercolors is they just, if you just watched that there, it just spreads. It's just beautiful. They have this um, binding agent or it's called Aquasol. Aquasol. And it really moves the paint. And then I'll kind of go in with my opera and do the same thing. Just kind of tapping it in some places. You might need to get right into the pigment there. So I didn't know this, but I watched a little video today on seahorses and the male seahorses actually give birth. Kind of crazy. And they have tons of little babies. They're an interesting little creature. If you know any fun facts about seahorses, please share them in the comments. So this guy is a little bit more orange than my other fella. And that is okay. So I already have some areas that are going to be drying. And these guys have little knobbies around these areas so you can just pull them out with your brush. And if there are certain classes that you'd like to see, go ahead and throw them in chat. I like to keep that in mind and consider it as I am prepping for classes. It's probably time that I did a uh, class that is a landscape class. See, I'm going to put a little bit of this around the eye. So you can kind of just keep playing with this. I have less water and more pigment, kind of as I'm motoring around here. And 
And this little fin on the back has a lot of pigment and color in it, and it's actually kind of clear. So I'm just going to lift that with my brush as I've pulled some water off my brush here. And that should do it. You could even, if you want to, add a little bit of color to your bubbles. But you could also add a cool color to those bubbles as well. Okay, so what I've got to do now is I'm going to take my hair dryer and dry this uh, very gently because we have quite a bit of water here. And so this will allow you a little time to play with your paint. And then also, um, if you are still sketching, it might give you a little extra time. So I'm going to mute myself here. My mute went away, I'm afraid. Maybe not, okay. So we will just mute up here. Okay, so again, if you're just joining us, you can access the reference imagery in the chat there. There is a link that you can download. So uh, better late than never. And let's see, we're gonna switch over back over here. Okay, so uh, one of the things that we could do is we can keep painting. And if you just have paint, you can kind of keep painting or we can move to our colored pencils, which I think I'm going to do at this point. So of course I'm using a heating board uh, that is the Icarus drawing board. It heats 
And you can use, like I said before, a heating pad and a cookie sheet to do this on your own. You certainly don't have to go out and buy anything. So just know that that's an option. I'm going to hide this here really quick and shuffle things around. So you can see all of the colors that I'm using right here. These are some uh, colors that I used this morning for our example. It's like I need two more arms or something here. Okay. So, and on my heating board here, let's see if we can scoot you back here. So one side of this board is warm and then the other side is cool. So you can kind of flip between the two. And all it really does is it enables us to melt our Sorry about that, guys. Of course, there's technical difficulties. Every time I move this camera, it kicks me off. So I apologize. Let's go back to our overhead view. live video don't move the camera okay let's try it one more time here there we are okay sorry about that we are a little askew here let's see if i can move this without disconnecting myself okay so we have a really good start here and you can keep anything that you like in this first one uh, just by adding just a little bit of color from our colored pencils. And this one is a little bit more orange than my other one that I did. So this is a noisy, noisy class. So kind of what I did in the last one is I just started going in and defining certain areas. I have this really nice dark, it's a dark purple, but it's called black cherry. And I started kind of defining these areas like the eye. So he looks like he's looking at you. And you can add these stripes if you want they have these kind of they're like little tiger stripes kind of so whatever color you choose it really doesn't matter but you'll just need a dark color so if you have a black color or a dark blue or a brown that you like this is just so I can go in and kind of add these dark areas that are these stripes. These guys are so interesting looking. I'm kind of adding this area where we can stick out a, a little tongue there. I'm going to actually zoom in here. So you can see this a little bit better. And they kind of have these little areas on their eye that kind of radiate out. I'm just kind of going around the eye, defining it a little so you can see it there on camera. It really starts giving this guy some life. And 
And if you need to see an example of a seahorse, I recommend that you, you can pull up Google just so you can have some reference for what these special little creatures look like. I'm going to kind of define this area too. And it just goes to show, it kind of depends on where, how your paint uh, floated in your water as to how he looks here. You can see I painted outside the lines here, so that's okay. We don't care about that. In this class, it is legal to paint outside the lines. So I'm just going to kind of lightly define... this area here, fin area. And really lightly, I'm just sketching in these lines here. Because what we can do is we can put a light color next to this and then it will make that light color kind of stand out. They have a little, some little stripes here on the top of their head as well. So again, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, I'm always excited to have new folks in my classes. Um, I finally, I've hit the 300 mark, so I have a lot of new people uh, checking out my classes and my channel. So welcome if you're one of the new folks that has um, discovered my teaching channel. So I'm just kind of defining these little nubbies. You can really do them in any color that you want. And maybe, see I left the nubbies out of the tail so you can add them as well. So if you actually live in Pocatello, I feel like it's a good time to tell you that we are having an art fest in town and it actually is happening on the 26th of June. That should be a Saturday and uh, we have a Saturday market and a bunch of fun demonstrations are going to be happening at the art center and just all, all around downtown, it's kind of like an extra special uh, art walk. So it's going to be really busy and fun. So if you're in town, I highly recommend that you come check it out. Because we're also having a mural fest. So there are several folks in town who are painting walls in town. Local artists are painting walls, so you might want to check it out. Okay, so I've got some of this dark defining color in. Now I'm going to hit it with some of my other colors. So because my uh, seahorse here is kind of pink and orange, I have some kind of pink and orange colors to accentuate these areas. And you can see in this example, we have little nubbies here on the side. So I have those to put in too. But like I said, I just kind of went in and defined this area with my pencil. So I have this carmine red. I'm just kind of lightly sketching in with this if you want a more coverage or a darker 
color, you can certainly lay it down harder on your drawing and that will give you a darker coverage. And the beauty about using heat in this situation is that you don't have to work as hard. You don't have to press as hard. It just kind of softens that pencil a little bit. And I just like to present it because it's a unique, um, it's a unique idea and a unique way to work. And it certainly isn't up my idea, but I definitely like to share tools and tricks that I learn through my schooling or otherwise. And I thought you guys might enjoy it as something different to do with your colored pencil. So I'm just kind of also taking this orange color and you'll see on top of the orange, it looks pretty pink in this camera view, but uh, it kind of just gives it a little more definition. <laughs> Welcome Laurel. That sounds like quite a quandary if your cat is stuck up in a tree. So hopefully Leo is doing okay. And since you're just tuning in, you can download uh, the reference for this class, or you can just draw along. I know Andy likes to kind of do his own sketching, so no problem. So you can just see, I'm just kind of coloring in areas where it suits me. And, you know, I have so much great, we'll zoom in here, some great granulation in here. I want to keep that. And so I can also work into the other color that I had here. And also, if you're new to this class, I have a couple of people who check in and do this class with me every week. And so welcome. You have great company that you're among. Okay, so I showed you this last week and I'm gonna show it to you again. This is a Prismacolor colorless blender and you can get these probably at Dick Blick, but you can also get them at your local art supply store if they carry Prismacolor. I like to use them kind of when I'm done with an area and just because the wax spreads and then it can kind of thin out an area sometimes. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you kind of how this works. If you kind of run it over your colors, you can kind of move in a circular fashion here or back and forth. You can see how nicely this blends and it kind of gets into the creases of the paper and really um, fills it with color. So it can be a great tool and combined with the heat, it really does a lovely job. So know that this is a tool out there that you can use to really blend your colored pencil. Now, one question you might have that I know I didn't answer at the beginning of our class was, what kind of paper are you using? So because we are using a water media, uh, I am using watercolor paper. If you have a paper that is mixed media, you could use it too. Uh, if I'm just doing colored pencil, I would use a Bristol paper because it's a little hardier than your average sketch paper. But sometimes the best paper is the one that you have close at hand. So use what you have. But watercolor paper will kind of survive both of these mediums. So I'm just kind of going around the body and I'm going to be highlighting some of these or coloring in some of these areas where we'd have a form shadow, which is something that turns away from the light. I don't know if 
seahorses really have a cute bum like this, but I'm going for it. I'm really loving this granulation, so I'm probably just going to keep it. But what using both of these mediums kind of does, there's a couple of things. So if you're new, this might be new to you. Some people are really, truly very intimidated by watercolor. It can be really hard and intimidating. So one reason that you might use both these mediums is to lay down a color and then practice with your colored pencils because a lot of us start with pencils and we understand our control with that and so you might be more comfortable kind of moving in with colored pencils the other thing is that you can cover a lot of ground with watercolor that uh, you can do it really quickly so we laid down color here we got a lot of color in there right away and then we could work in the details and so uh, I think that, you know, that's a great way to work too. Welcome. Welcome, Heidi. Thanks for tuning in. I just saw you left uh, a note here. So welcome. I put these classes on at least three times a month where we're doing live, different live things. So thanks for checking us out and tuning in. And I appreciate you saying hello. And Heidi, since you're new, you may want to grab some of the, uh, the link for this class where you can download the uh, drawing for this. Let's see if I can pull it up here. The drawing, so you can get to painting too. So we just kind of keep adding to this seahorse here wherever you think you could use a little bit more detail now the one thing that you won't be able to do really is to go back in with your watercolor once you've laid down your wax pencils because they will resist water which can be really handy if you're using them for that specific purpose with your watercolor. So I always start with watercolor first and then jump in with the colored pencils. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit here. So for the little fin here, I used a little bit of blue This is non-photo blue. And the reason I did that was because it's really transparent for them. And it just gives you a pop of a little bit different color. Of course, you can put blue or whatever color you want anywhere. You could even put it up here, that dark color. And of course with our bubble. Okay. What do I want to do? So I think I might go in with some purple because you can see on this seahorse, I have some more purple around here to give it a little more depth and interest. So I'm gonna do that. Now this is a Derwent color. This is Imperial purple, but any purple 
will do. And maybe there won't be much of it, but. You know, the question is how much light really is there when you're in the ocean? There's really not much. So you're really probably not going to have too many shadows and such. But we'll pretend like this seahorse has some color. Or I'm sorry, some light. Just adding a little pink here because it's awfully orange. And any area again that you, this will just help create form. So I'm adding a little bit of shading here. And in theory, this area here is transparent, but it was feeling really kind of flat. Again, this is a colorless blender that I'm using. Just trying to fill in kind of some of these areas of this paper. This is a, a cold press kind of watercolor paper as opposed to hot press. Hot press is smooth. So if you decide that you really like working this way and like this technique, but you're not a big fan of the paper, Never fear hot presses here. All right, so Heidi has a good question here. So this dark area, I did start with a pencil line, but it's actually pretty light. Let's see, I'll move this comment really quickly. So if you could see down here, this, is a pencil line of the drawing at first. And you can always lighten that with a kneaded eraser uh, before you begin painting. I just roll mine up and then roll it over. But this darker area is actually a colored pencil and it is uh, called black cherry that I went in with to darken these areas to define them. Now, of course, you don't have to do that. And of course, you could actually go in with your paintbrush if you wanted to and define all those things too. Sometimes it's even cleaner or easier. You don't have to sharpen a paintbrush. Uh, but for this exercise, I used this black cherry color, which I really like when I'm using uh, pencils like this because it's a it's not a black, but it is a dark color and it kind of enriches these other colors as opposed to where black is so dark and stark. But hey, if all you have is black, you use what you have, right? So now I have this uh, carmine red. And you can just accentuate areas that you want. Of course, you don't have to take it this far. But since we're hanging out and spending some time together, why not kind of have some fun together? This is also would be a great class for or exercise for kids because, you know, seahorses are pretty cool. And you can make them any color that you want. And also, uh, Heidi, if you missed it, you're welcome. 
Uh, if you missed it, I'm using a board here that heats up. So part of it heats up over here and then part is cool. So in theory, as I'm working along, I can feel the heat here, but it melts my pencil a little bit too. This is great for when you're just working with colored pencils as well. But you don't have to buy this board. Like I said before, you can use a heating pad and turn a cookie sheet upside down on it and it will heat that cookie sheet and you'll get the same effect and you probably have a heating pad and a cookie sheet already. So in case you tune in later, <laughs> just know that that's a cool trick and I didn't come up with that myself. I actually found that on the web when I was looking for alternatives to this board because this is an Icarus board. They're expensive and I don't know if she actually makes the drawing board anymore. So there should be an alternative for people who are interested in checking it out, so. Okay, so I could add a little bit of interest to the head here. One thing I really like to do when I'm using colored pencils uh, is we have this nice smooth area here. Let's see if we can zoom in maybe. And I'll show you this other picture. I really love sometimes just hash marking with my pencil to create some texture and some lines. I know in some areas we've smoothed it out, but sometimes it's just really nice to just use some lines to really give it that uh, drawn feel. and just add just a little bit of texture and interest. And maybe if that's not dark enough for you, you can go in with another color. And really truly, when you're looking at your seahorse, your main focal point or main focus in this guy is going to be his head. So any details that you want to add, you can just really focus on him because we have plenty of detail elsewhere. And I have to remember these little nubbies. So I'm kind of doing a side C shape, kind of running up here. And we'll kind of get towards the end of this class where you can use a white. Now I have to locate that. Now white is kind of tricky, especially with um, this kind of medium. Sometimes it shows up nicely, sometimes it doesn't. So you can use it as a highlight and it works best in a dark area. So there you can see it really worked. And I didn't actually test out my battery powered eraser, but we're gonna do that because we can test things out. And as you can see, that is more effective actually than using this white, is by using this because it lifts that color out. So let's zoom out here really quick. And because really what we're lifting here is the watercolor. But this is the only way that I found to really truly get a nice white when you're dealing with uh, colored pencils. It's just that a little force or motion behind the eraser that really does a nice job of pulling out that pigment. So if you have one of these, great. If you don't, I highly recommend investing in a battery powered eraser. They, you can even get a smaller eraser portion. Let's try it down here. You can kind of draw with your eraser. 
And often when I'm working digitally, I use this technique and use the eraser to pull out color. And this just does a lovely job of that. So for highlights, pretty cool, huh? I'm kind of digging that. And because you're using watercolor paper, it's pretty strong. Of course, you could try to go back in with your colored pencil if you want to. The one thing, and I just did it, is sometimes when you have a white pencil, you need to have a spare piece of paper ready to get any extra pigment that's on that pencil lead off. Or you're just going to transfer it to your, your drawing or painting. So you could go back in with your white if you want to, or if you don't have an eraser, you can just use your white. Of course, it's most effective where we have some darker paint or colors. But it will bring color with it if it is another wax pigment. So along these areas, I may have to get out the handy dandy eraser again. But to make these light areas stand out, you can put a darker color next to it. So I put that dark purple next to this, but you could go in even with an orange. kind of next to that white to help it kind of stand out a little bit more. And there you have a really colorful seahorse. So I'm really curious to know if you painted along with me today uh, what color you made your seahorse if you made it a different color. I really love pink and orange and yellow uh, working alongside one another because they're just so pretty and they blend so nicely. But they aren't the other, only color combination out there. So if you used a different color combination in chat, let me know what you used. And if you want to learn more about me and my artwork, you can visit uh, me on social media over at IHaveGumption.com on both Facebook and Instagram. And of course, if you are uh, looking for something to do on Thursdays, oftentimes I have a class uh, three times a week on YouTube and I have one live zoom class in my patreon class so next week that should be uh, I won't be on YouTube next week because I will be on patreon but you can check my calendar over on my website too to see what's happening and if I have a class on Facebook I have that link up on my website. So what questions do you have? Throw them in chat.
So my, uh, my sharpener today ate one of my pencil leads and it is all one piece. And I am trying to figure out how to fix that guy. <laughs> I love the uh, battery powered sharpener because it helps, especially for using Prisma colors. It really keeps that um, pencil sharp, which really helps make your drawings better. And uh, nobody likes a dull pencil. But I have to show you this because my husband gave me this. I just need to attach it somewhere. If you are older, you probably recognize <laughs> this. These are the best sharpeners there are. <laughs> Truly. Again, if you want these little nubs to stand out a little bit more, you can darken underneath them. All right. Oh, we have some questions. Sorry, guys. Okay, so where did I get my heating pad? Well, it was a heating pad that I had. Um, I think I probably got it at Walgreens or somewhere. And, uh, you know, it's just around the house. So uh, if you're looking for a heating pad, I'd, you could go to Amazon, but you could also go to, uh, you know, I don't know, your local pharmacy, Fred Meyer, whatever you have close. And of course, if you have a cookie sheet, you know, you don't want uh, grease on the bottom of it. So you want to make sure the bottom's clean, nice and clean. So, hey, thank you, Laurel. I'm so glad that you tuned in and were able to at least participate tonight. And uh, I'm glad that you learned something new. I always like that. So that's rad. All right, so this is how these two seahorses look. If you do your own seahorse, uh, tag me on social media. I want to see what you're doing. And uh, if you have a different color combo, I'd love to see it. So uh, go ahead and hit me up on social media. And really quickly, we're going to switch cameras here. So you can see the mess that is me and my office. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate you all being here. And uh, I'm so glad when you have learned something new. Uh, if you want to learn more about me, you can go to IHaveGumption.com and check that out. As well as I just want to say thanks to my patrons who are always here in this class with me, your diehards. Next week, we will be in Patreon doing a Zoom class. And uh, so thanks, Colin and Laurel, for your never-ending support. I appreciate it. All right. Unless we have any other questions, I'm going to let you go about your Thursday evening. But I hope you have a fabulous weekend. And I hope you do something creative this weekend. And if you paint or you create a seahorse, tag me on social media. So take care, and I will see you later. Maybe.